So prior to this, we've talked about definite integrals as being area under the curve. We talked about that in terms of Riemann sums, how we could break that into little rectangles, and it was we let the number of rectangles in, approach an infinite amount, or the width of the rectangle approaching zero, it in fact turned into this integral from a to b of f of x dx, and that gave us the area under the curve. Anything above the x-axis was positive, anything below the x-axis was negative. So what happens if we have two curves and we wanted to find out the area between two different curves? Something like this, for instance, where we have f of x on the top, g of x below it, and we want to know the area between the curves between two points a and b. Well, as long as f of x is greater than or equal to g of x, then the area is going to be given just like before from a to b the integral, but now it's going to be f of x minus g of x dx. Let's do a quick example. Let's say f of x equals x plus 4 and g of x is 3 minus x over 2 and we're looking at the range from 1 to 4. The first thing we need to do is make sure which function is greater. Please do not assume that just because I call something f of x that it is in fact the larger function. So go ahead and graph it. And when you graph it, you find that f of x is in fact always greater than g of x. So once we do that, we're just going to integrate. We're going to set this up from 1 to 4, again f of x minus g of x. Remember to use parentheses. It's negative all of the g of x, not just the 3. We combine like terms. We go ahead and integrate. We evaluate at 1 and 4. And we do a little bit of arithmetic. And we finally get to the answer of 57 divided by 4. And it's, of course, going to be units squared. Whatever we're talking about, this is area, so it's always going to be square units. All right, so this is pretty straightforward, very similar to what we did before. But now, instead of just f of x, it's now f of x minus g of x. Of course, you know it can't be that easy, right? We're going to have to worry about something else. And that something else we're going to have to worry about is... What happens when these two curves cross? When two curves cross, f of x is not going to always be on top. So what we will do is take the absolute value of f of x minus g of x. This is a lot like what we did when we found net area instead of taking the positive and the negative as positive and negative, we made the negative always positive. We took the absolute value. And just like we did before, we're going to have to break this up into regions to calculate this. So let's look at another example. In this case, we have g of x being cosine of x and f of x being sine of x. And we want to find the area between these two curves between 0 and pi. You can see that they cross at the point pi over 4. So region 1 in pink is the case where g of x is greater than f of x, whereas section 2, f of x, is greater than g of x. So that means we're going to set up our integration like this. We're going to have the first region from 0 to pi over 4 of cosine of x minus sine of x, because again in this case g of x is the greater function, plus the area of the second region, which is from pi over 4 to pi, but this time it's going to be the upper function sine x, which happens to be f of x, minus g of x, the lower function. And I'm not going to go through the integration. This is pretty straightforward integration, but trust me, it's going to be 2 square root of 2. Okay, so that's great. We have what happens when they don't cross and what happens when they do cross sort of. Um, you always know there's something else to worry about. The first thing we have to worry about is this point of intersection. How the heck do we find it? Well, I just told you it was pi over 4. Well, it was pretty easy to read from the graph that that point of intersection was pi over 4. But what if I asked you to do this algebraically 
instead of graphically. Well, all you do to find that point of intersection is you set the two functions equal to each other. f of x equals g of x. When does that occur, specifically in the range from 0 to pi? Well, the only time that sine and cosine are the same value would be at pi over 4, that is 45 degrees, when, they are, when the sine of 45 degrees and the cosine of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. And we know this only happens in quadrant 1, because in quadrant 1, everything's positive. 0 to pi goes between quadrants 1 and 2. In quadrant 2, sine is positive, but cosine is negative. So the only place algebraically we can find that that point of intersection would be is pi over 4, which we knew from looking at the graph. Okay, so we can find the point of intersection now. Are we done? One more thing. If you have ever watched the TV, old TV show Columbo, you always know that as he was walking out the door, he'll turn around and say, one more thing, one more question. What do we do with something like this? The graphs cross, certainly, and I could find out where they cross by setting them equal to each other. But if I look at from 0 to 1, I see f of x is on top, but it, it's, it's not this doesn't quite work the way it did before. It's from f of x to, to what? Well, actually, it's just f of x to 0. When we have a situation like this, where we have two lines that are crossing, but the area below only involves one of the functions on each side, this is just like we would have calculated the area under the curve for a single curve. What we have to watch out for, of course, is what section of the curve we're going to be talking about which function. So from 0 to 1, f of x is on top. So we're going to go from 0 to 1 for f of x minus 0. Do you have to write the minus 0? No. But I'd just like to show that this is really what we did in Calc 1 when we were just finding area under the curve. We didn't realize it, but we were really comparing that f of x to 0. The second part of this goes from 1 to 2, and now it's g of x to 0, or g of x minus 0. So again, we'll set this up. It's a pretty straightforward problem, and I promise you that the answer is in fact 5 sixths.